Hello students and welcome to the first lesson in our AS Physical Geography course. Today we're going to be looking at Unit 1, which is all about rivers, floods and management. And to begin this is Part 1, the Hydrological Cycle. The Hydrological Cycle. This is a diagram of what you have to know for the hydrological cycle in AS Human Geography. Now, it's also known as the water cycle, and the water cycle is something that's been studied in the early years of education. So this is a lot more in depth and contains all the information that you have to know. So I'm going to go over it now. So here I've drawn what it um, should look like at our a um, AS level. So as always, we always start here at the sun. So we begin at the sun and that's where we get our energy from. So now that we have energy, we then begin to evaporate the, um, the water in the sea. Now, you're not going to have to know all the um, terms and processes as well as you may have to have done in, for example, GCSE physics. All you have to know that evaporation is when high temperatures turn liquid drops into gaseous molecules. So, once we do have these liquid drops here in the sea, right here, turn into gaseous molecules, they move up, as shown here, by the evaporation um, like streams of water vapour, and then they condense. So what happens in condensation is that the cool temperatures then turn gaseous molecules into liquid drops again. So then it turns into this cloud. Once a cloud then gains a lot of mass and it's not able to support itself, the liquid drops then fall to the surface formed in a saturated atmosphere. And then the saturated atmosphere must be sort of quite high up, just above the mountains. Of course this isn't drawn to scale, it's just drawn to, to, make, a, um, to make it easy to the eye. So now that we've got our water drops falling, um, a lot of them drop here on top of the snowy mountains. Some drop straight back into the sea, others into rivers, and then the rest here just onto the land. So it, it drops everywhere. And then the water from the mountains, of course, then evaporates on the snow caps, and then it moves down here into the river. Once it moves into the river, it can then stay in this store here, which is a lake and then moves all across back into the sea where the cycle can then begin again. However, some of the water is intercepted here by the vegetation. What that means is that the vegetation then gets the water and is storing it, you know, for, for whichever purposes the plants may need it for. Now, there is a thing called stem flow where the water moves through the vegetation towards the sea, but um, that's not something that's going to concern us at the moment. Then, uh, for the water that lands on the land, there is overland flow, which basically means that the water just moves down across the across the sort of um, face of the land back into the sea directly. Okay, now you've probably lay seen this layer here, which I've drawn on, where there's a little break between the overland and then the where you know underwater is the the bedrock. So this layer here is known as bedrock. If you're copying the diagram, I'd probably advise you to write that on there in case you forget. But this little layer here is the the layer of ground that separates the both. This is pretty much the, the soil right here. So in the soil we have a thing called through flow where the water doesn't quite um, go all the way down to the bedrock but it then does travel towards the sea. But how does the water get from the overland down to the soil? And that is infiltration. So infiltration is the absorption and downward movement of water from the surface towards the soil. And then once it's in the soil, it can then percolate, which is the vertical movement of water down the bedrock. So percolation is then what causes the water to reach this aquifer over here, which is an underground store. And then that enables the water to travel out and go towards the sea. So in summary, we have a lot of ways in which the, um, the water can actually reach the sea. Um, whether it be precipitating back onto it, or ground or overland flow, groundwater flow, down with the river. Um, there are really tons and tons of ways. So, right now, I'd like you to copy this if you haven't done so already. Go over your notes, and then we're going to look at the definitions of the processes. Okay, now that we've gone over how the hydrological cycle works, we're going to look at its processes. Evaporation. This is um, received from the energy of the sun and it's when high temperatures turn liquid drops into gaseous molecules. Condensation. This happens once the liquid has then evaporated, and it's when low temperatures then turn the gaseous molecules back into liquid drops. Precipitation 
happens after condensation and it's when the liquid drops that have formed in the atmosphere fall to the surface. Infiltration is the absorption and downward movement of the water from the surface to the soil and percolation is vertical movement of water down the bedrock. So now we're going to look at the forms of flow. Ground flow then occurs when uh, the water is then percolated into the bedrock and this is the underground flow of the water in the bedrock due to gravity. Through flow is the horizontal flow of water underground in the soil so that happens when the water infiltrates into the soil and overland flow occurs when the downward flow of water on the surface towards the sea. So this happens when the water hasn't even infiltrated into the soil. Okay, so here are some questions. What I would like you to do is fill in the blanks to this model. Once you're ready, you can pause it and then hit play again to check out the answers. Okay, so here are all the answers. If you did get all five of them right, congratulations, I'd advise you to move on to the next video. However, if you did not, try rewinding the video or going through your notes once more, just so that you're sure you get all the answers right. Okay, this has been the end of the lesson. Next lesson, we will be looking at the drainage basin. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you then. Goodbye.